We're at lesson 2.2b. We're dividing integers by using absolute values, and we're dividing with zero. The absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3. It's 3 jumps from zero. And the absolute value of positive 3 is 3. It's 3 jumps from zero. Absolute values are always positive because they're a distance from zero, and distances are always positive. We've learned the rules for multiplication and division of integers. If they have like signs, our product or quotient will be positive. And if they have unlike signs, our product or quotient will be negative. So this is what we do to divide integers. The very first thing we do is determine the sign of the quotient. If they have like signs, they'll produce a positive quotient. If there are unlike signs, they'll produce a negative quotient. Then we divide the absolute values of the numbers, and we check our work for accuracy and reasonableness. Here we have a negative 24 divided by a positive 4. So remember, fractions are division problems. They have unlike signs. We have a negative and a positive. So we know the quotient is negative. The absolute value of negative 24 is 24. The absolute value of positive 4 is 4. We think, well, 24 divided by 4 is 6. We know it's got to be a negative because they have unlike signs. It's a negative 6 for our quotient. For this problem, we need to divide negative 136 by negative 8. They have like signs, so we know the quotient will be positive. We think the absolute value of negative 136 is 136. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So we do the division. We do 136 divided by 8. 8 can fit into 13 one time. And 1 times 8 is 8. We subtract it. 13 minus 8 is 5. We drop the 6 down. Now we're doing 8 into 56. Well, 7 times 8 is 56. We multiply and write the 56 here and subtract it and get a 0. We know the quotient is 17, but we also know that because they have like signs, it'll be a positive 17. In video 2.2a, we used related multiplication to solve integer division. That's linked in the video description if you missed it. We can use multiplication to understand why division by 0 is not possible. We have 4 divided by 0, so we write a related multiplication sentence as 0 times some number is equal to 4. But this is impossible. 0 times some number isn't equal to 4. It can't be. The zero property of multiplication states that 0 times any number is 0. No matter what we put here, it will equal a 0. Our dividend is 4. It's being divided by a 0 divisor. The divisor cannot be 0. Division by 0 is not possible. We say division by 0 is undefined. To divide, we split an amount into equal groups. When we divide by 2, we make two equal groups. Here's 6 divided by 2. We have 6 counters. We divide it into two equal groups. There's 3 in each group. Our quotient is 3. When we divide by 3, we make 3 equal groups. Now, our quotient is 2 because we have 3 equal groups that contain 2. We can't divide by 0. We have no groups. There's zero groups. Six divided into zero groups. We can't have six and divide it into zero groups. It won't make sense. It's undefined. So division by zero is undefined. When the divisor is zero, the division is undefined. We can't have four divided by zero because when we try to write a related multiplication sentence, we get 0 times some number is equal to 4, and there is no number that we can multiply by 0 to equal 4. It doesn't make sense. It's undefined. But 
the dividend can be divided by zero. When the dividend is zero, so notice it didn't work when it was the second number, but when it's the first number, when the dividend is zero, or if you're writing it with division brackets like this, it's on the inside. When the dividend is zero, the quotient is zero. Then it will work. We have zero divided by four equals zero, and the related multiplication would be zero times four, or four times zero, is equal to zero. We have four groups of zero. So here we have some to divide. We've got a negative 12 divided by a positive 2. They have unlike signs, so we know right away this is going to be a negative quotient. And we think, well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. We know it's negative 6. Here we have negative 12 divided by negative 3. We've got like signs. So that means we're going to have a positive quotient. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. We put a 4 here. And we don't need to write that positive sign, do we? We know the quotient is 4. Here we have negative 12 divided by 0. Ah, ha, ha. The divisor is a 0. This is undefined. But here we have 0 divided by negative 12. We can do this because the dividend can be 0. If 0 is in this front place, this first digit, then it can be divided, and that is going to equal 0. Here we need to divide. We have a negative 112 divided by 7. We can see they have unlike signs. We have a negative and a positive, so we know right away this is going to be a negative. They have unlike signs. We can just do regular division. We can do 112 divided by 7. 7 can't fit into 1, so there's no answer there. 7 fits into 11 one time. 7 times 1 is 7. We subtract it a 4. It's the 2's turn to come down. Now we do 7 can fit into 42 how many times? Well, 7 times 6 is 42. We subtract the 42. We get a 0. We know that it's 16. We know it's a negative 16. Here, we've got a negative 207 divided by a negative 9. We can see they have like signs, so we know our quotient's going to be a positive. We do 207 divided by 9. 9 fits into 20 two times, because 9 times 2 is 18. We subtract it, get a 2, we drop down the 7, 9 fits into 27 three times, because 9 times 7 is 27, we subtract it as 0. We know that we have a positive 23, don't we? But we don't need to write the plus sign for positive, do we? We just write the 23. Here we have three expressions, one here, one here, and one here, and it's telling us to order them from least to to greatest. So the first thing we do is determine the sign, then divide their absolute values. We need to find out what they're equal to in order to put them in order from least to greatest. Here we have a negative 32 and a negative 8, so we know the answer, the quotient, is going to be a positive, and we think 32 divided by 8 is 4. It's a positive 4. We have a negative 20 divided by 10. They have Unlike signs, so we know it's going to be a negative, and 20 divided by 10 is 2, it's a negative 2. Here we have a negative 14 and a negative 2. They have like signs, so our quotient's going to be positive, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. It's a positive 7. Now we can put them in order from least to greatest. And remember, numbers decrease in value as we move left on a number line, so which of these would be farther left on a number line. A positive 4, a negative 2, or a positive 7. If you said the negative 2 would be the least, you're right. We're going to put this one here. That would be the first one. Then what would be the next number, the next greatest quotient? Well, if you said positive 4, you're right. So that would be the next one, which means this one is the greatest. We determined their sign, and then we divided their absolute values.
We finished Lesson 2.2b, and we're going to move on to 2.2c using integer division to solve problems. Keep trying, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!